A very warm welcome to this year's seventh installation of the e-lounge. Today, we are very honored to be joined by Sipiwe Moyo, a seasoned HR practitioner, organizational behavior specialist, and author, as we discuss his two books, Your Next Move and Stagnation Must Fall, hashtag. Sipiwe Moyo is a sought-after, highly uh, rated international keynote speaker, facilitator, and CEO of Paradigm People Solutions. He is an adjunct faculty member at the Gordon Institute of Business Science, VETS University Business School, Henley Business School, and the Johannesburg Business School. He is the recipient of South Africa's Speaker Hall of Fame and the Motivational Speaker of the Year for 2021. In his book, Your Next Move, Sipiwe provides readers with the career strategies to survive and thrive during and after or beyond COVID-19. While in his book, Stagnation Must Fall, the author takes us through 100 practical lessons that will activate readers' progression to move beyond stagnation. Insights and inspirations stimulate great conversation. The e-lounge is one of our knowledge share platforms anchored on our values of learning and leadership. We do hope that you'll tune in, engage, and take away the knowledge from this great conversation. And always remember, those who desire to lead should read. Thank you. They said my kind don't fit, so I forced it. First classic in the bag, I hope you bought it. They said my kind don't fit, so I forced it. First classic in the bag, I hope you bought it. They said my kind don't fit, so I forced it. Because I believe if I don't quit, then I'll get a portion of it. So sings the young man, um, locally known as Casper Novest. Uh, my author today refers to him by his, you know, local name. But to me, if you want to be able to understand how much of a prolific uh, rapper Casper is, listen to this song. I hope you bought it. And I hope you bought it is about the hard work that one has to put in for their career to grow, for you to be able to get somewhere. But my author today said, and my guest today said, no man, I can actually distill this into a magic potion that could be sold. And he's done exactly that. How does one navigate his career? How, how does one put in the extra layers, the work that has to be put in into what must happen for your career to grow? But beyond that, how do you do two things? How do you create your next move? And how do you stop stagnation? The two books we are reviewing today, and my author, Spiwe Moyo. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Tepo. That's such a great introduction. I love that song, by the way. Love it, love it. I would, I would have thought you, it would be one of your, your, your songs that you, you really enjoy. Absolutely. I love it. Welcome, sir, and let's get right into it. Sure. So the first thing that most people worry about and they ask themselves is, who is Sipiwe Moyo? Thank you very much. So Spiro Moyo is, um, I nearly said young man, I really feel young, but uh, relatively young, We're still young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> born, born in Mfulo South, so we to uh, grew up in Orange Farm the, in the south of Johannesburg. Really a young man from the township, but who is really, really passionate about progress. I study success, I study progress, I study careers, and so for me, every little conversation I'm having, or if I'm watching a Casper Vest song and when he releases which song, I'm studying his moves. So I love studying people's moves. I love studying people's careers. But yeah, I'm a Soweto born guy, grew up in Orange Farm, proper Kasi guy, um, who've had the privilege of going to university and speaking in, in, in many stages. But at the core, I'm really, really a Kasi guy. You also have a, a, a thing for quotes. Yes. Um, which we share, as what do they call it, as everybody will tell you, the, no good speech ends without a quote. Yes. Um, but here's where I go and, okay, first and foremost, let's go back to, grew up in Soweto. Yes. How do you end up in Orange Farm? 
So, um, so Soweto and Orange Farm have, has a, have a very interesting link. So when I'm growing up in Mufulo South, and and there's this township, uh, little township or informal settlement just next to Mufulo South in Mufulo Village. I think it was called, I can't even remember, but it was a really squatter camp where people were moved mm. from that Mufulo, it was Mshenguville, okay. where people were moved from Mshenguville to Orange Farm as Orange Farm was starting. I didn't move with them initially, so my parents moved first. Mm. Um, but they were also starting to get worried about the fact that you know, Soweto is just way too vibrant. And in their view, um, I was just not going to finish metric properly in Soweto because it was just surrounded by noise, there's a lot of fun. And to them, they were not convinced I was going to finish school. So they asked me to join them in Orange Farm. They had moved earlier. They asked me to join them. I had, I had re I remained in Mfulo South with my aunt and just a big family home. They asked me to, to join them because they were not convinced I'm studying, they were not convinced that I find some time for solitude in the noisy, busy uh, Soweto, and that's how I end up in Orange Farm. That's intriguing, because that, that brings up to something that in the books, you know, you talk about mm. the day you stood on the platform, mm. and you say to one of your uh, 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 friends, mm. you know, we gotta work hard. Mm and get out of here. Mm. Now, we got to talk about this because it's, mm. it, it intrigues me that, mm. you know, the, the two parts uh, the, the, that stand there, and, 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 um, but they don't end up in the same place. Mm. Let's talk about this conversation first, you know, yeah, no, and, 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 and because it's quite an enlightening conversation mm. to a great degree. No, it's very enlightening. Firstly, I have to admit, I think my parents were partly right. I yeah. think what, what Orange Farm did for me is that uh, in, in Mufulo South, I grew up there, I had a lot of friends. Yeah. So now I moved to Orange Farm, where initially I had uh, no friends, so no social capital. And, and at that time, you have your books, and, and, and that's it. That's all you have. And in fact, that's also where I start getting used to reading even for leisure, I start getting used to holding a book and reading it. Because uh, initially when I get to Orange Farm, it's just a space that I struggle to navigate, I struggle to get friends initially. But once I had I got in a few friends, and and remember, I when I moved to Orange Farm, I was still studying in Soweto, so I used to take a train, um, train, I think when I was still studying, I think it was trained was called the 17, um, which I used to take to school at Pafokang. So I got used to traveling by train. So even when I started working, I still traveled by train. At this point, I now have friends or in farm now, it's, it's home for me. So this particular incident that you're talking about, a friend of mine, it's half past four in the morning. We are standing at a train station waiting for the train. At that time, we're taking train number 9003. It comes at half past four in the morning. And at that point, we have a conversation about the fact that, look, this is an informal settlement. Surely, we also want to get out of here. We want to buy houses and cars like other people. So we agree amongst each other that that needs to happen. And. And, and that's a great conversation. But eventually, 15 years later or so, I visit Orange Farm because I had left. And my friend, unfortunately, is still traveling in that same train, 9003. And I ask him, my friend, what happened to our dream? Mm. We're supposed to work hard and get out of this place. And my friend says to me, you know what, Spicho, um, it's the system. The system has marginalized us and entrapped us. And eventually, I, I got permission to talk about this with my friend yeah. because eventually we spoke and I managed to help him and so on. But when you study that, you realize that, you know, we can be in the same environment with somebody mm -hmm. and depending on the moves that you make, uh, someone can really make inroads into their career and, and another person won't. So that's why it's very important to be intentional about our careers. It's very important to have a 
what we call an internal locus of control and say, you know what, there's a lot of things that are, might be against me, the environment might be tough, but it's, at some point, you gotta look yourself in the mirror and say, regardless of the circumstances that I'm in, I'm gonna push hard to, to achieve my goals. And so, so that is the conversation, one of the catalysts really, that really changed my life is always remembering that conversation. And even when I'm in certain situations now, I always remember that I have agency. Um, it's either I throw my hands in the air in despair, <laughs> or I look in the mirror and say, what can I do to get out of this environment? Let's unravel this thing. Yeah. Because it, it, to me, as, as, as we, we, we speak in order to equal it, in, in, you know, sometimes in big terms yes, and talk yes. about agency and, yes. and talk about um, having an internal locus of control. and. I'm sitting there, and I'm probably sitting here listening, and I can hear the voices of a young man there mm. saying, Spiro, you don't know what I'm going through right now. Uh, I have started a new job, or I am just trying to get by to get myself mm. a, a, a qualification. Mm. And, and, and the reason why I use the last line, I don't quit, and if I don't quit, I hope I'll get a portion. Mm. And, 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 and that's all Cosmo was looking for, mm. just to get a portion. Yes, mm. he made a big, uh, uh, what do they call it, a success out mm. of it. But where do people get that internal locus of mm. control? I mean, you, you, uh, the forces around you. Mm. Let's go back to something that interests me. You mm. said you didn't like it in what do they call it, in, 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 in Orange Farm. In yes. The did you not really like it, or were you still longing to go and play soccer in full? Look, <laughs> <laughs> look uh, I, look, so it, so it, you know, so it is amazing. So yes. it, you, you have friends, you are, you are playing soccer, and it's vibrant. You have your own friends. So when you get into any environment, I yes. think it's it's there's a lot of longing for for what you are missing, yes. and and the truth is. Every transition is like that. There has to be a point where you're like, oh, well, I have to accept my faith. I have to accept that, you know, I don't stay here anymore. Uh, I have to. So Orange Farm, there was nothing wrong with Orange Farm, yes. but I think I was struggling with the good old days in where I, where I grew up. So yes. I think you're right. And so these words like agency and so on, they are, they are very big words. But w what I always think about, you know, when I go to, a stadium. I'm an Orlando Pirates fan, and when I go to a stadium, I'm sorry for uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the way you are dressed, uh, you are with us in Pretoria, uh, so sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I probably should be in Pretoria. <laughs> yes. When you go to the stadium, there's a song that we sing there, like Bobo Vulega. Yes. You know, literally means if you just get a, a tiny little opportunity. Yes. You don't need a big opportunity. You need a tiny little opportunity. And if you can get in, you must really maximize. I, I think about it this way. You know, you are in an interview every day. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I was traveling on that train, actually, I was an intern at a company called Mining Qualifications mm -hmm. Authority, right? I'm an intern. Our internship is just like any other internship is 12 months. And many people... When they're in an internship, there's also that sense that, are they gonna take me? Are they not going to take me? You just forget that, look, this thing is an interview. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every day someone is watching how you do the small things. They're watching attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, they are watching whether you're willing to serve and so on and so forth. So those are the things that I'm talking about, that if you can just get in, yeah. Now, it's really in your hands what you do there. It's, okay. uh, you, it's, it's, a, it's an interview that you can use so well. Because I can tell you now, leaders are always looking for people with great attitude. In fact, they use this, this term that if you can hire for attitude, you can train for skill. Because yes. skill you can train. But when you have a, someone with a great attitude who's willing to learn, not that you, are, you want to be abused, you're just willing to learn, willing to serve, they're watching you and they're saying, Yo, we must make sure that before this internship ends, we find something for this young man. And I think that's what I'm talking about. Let's talk about that attitude. Because mm. I get a lot of guys, they are watching somebody grow. Mm. And they don't go to him and go, like, but Spiro, what is giving you all of these opportunities mm. that are coming through? Mm. Instead, what happens is they go into a mood where they start complaining. Yes. About you know uh, you know other people uh, what do they call it yes. or the so-called uh, open up the industry mm. hashtag open up yeah. the industry logic. <laughs> but 
that attitude, we never talk about yeah. it because yeah. it's, 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 it's what makes the difference between winners. And, and let's go to a specific incident. Yes. The bit where you start going to conferences because you carry boxes. Yes, yes. Simple things like that. Yes. I mean, let's talk about that and, yes. and let's tell the story because, yes. you know, sometimes we don't tell this part of the story mm. uh, where we carry the boxes. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and let's talk about attitude and talk to specifically the incident or, or, or what happens in, 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 in that setup. I like that. And, and I want to mention the organization's name so that yeah. if anyone wants to verify it, they can. Yes. So I initially, when I'm in this internship, yeah. right, uh, the Mining Qualifications Authority is one of the 21 sitters that we have in South Africa right now. So I get in there, I'm an intern, and by virtue of being a sitter, it means they host a lot of conferences. Yes. And, and when you host a conference, um, there's a lot of things that, you, that, that happens in the conference. You need someone to bring the boxes, bring the banners, uh, mend the registration table, and so on. And so when you are in the events department, the marketing department, or the leaders who are putting together this thing, you are always grateful of anybody that's going to raise their hand and say, I can help. So they bring us in as interns. They say, please come and help us. To, to set up the, the registration table, come and help us to, to do, to do the, the few things. Some of my friends uh, are like, no, but I have a degree. I'm not here to carry boxes. I'm not here to do this. I'm here to learn whatever you are abusing me and so on. Me, now I, I, I volunteer to carry these boxes. And remember, I don't have a car. I take a train from Orange Farm. Mm -hmm. I, what then happens is I take a train to work. We're based in Bramfontein. One of the leaders gives me a lift to the conference venue. Yeah. And, and then I'm there. I do the setup. I carry the boxes. I mend the registration table. At 9 o'clock when the conference is about to start, I'm supposed to then go back to the office. But I don't have a car. Mm -hmm. So you get one of the leaders. This, Antoine, mm -hmm. just stay. Just stay. I'll take you back to the office in the afternoon so that you catch your train. Yeah. Now, suddenly, you are there for boxes, but now you are listening to the conversations that your friends who refuse to help are not exposed to these mm. things. You don't even have a chair. You're sitting at the back awkwardly, but your ear is there. Mm. Suddenly, people are talking about the future world of work. They're talking about conferences. Suddenly, you understand that there are people who get paid to speak. Suddenly, you hear all kinds of things. The exposure that I'm getting at that time my friends who are in the office are not getting. I'm there for boxes, but the ear is learning. So fast forward 10 years later, uh, that story, and, and, and I become the chairman of the South African Board for People Practices, yes. right? And, and now I sign all the certificates that people are competent. My friends at that time are the same HR pr practitioners that I need to sign these things in. They forgot that the, one of the reasons I became the, the youngest chairman of the SAPPP mm -hmm. is not because I was too clever, it's because I was exposed mm -hmm. to things that they were not exposed while I'm carrying the boxes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's this idea that when people ask you to help, they're taking advantage of you, but you have to understand being in those environments gives you the exposure you learn things that you cannot even learn in the office. So we must calm down and help. But let's go back to issues. And we have to be comfortable with sure. it. Because they, they, we can't just say, no, but I'm not being abused and yes. all of that. Because remember, we have a country that yeah. has a history. Absolutely. And we cannot write it off. Absolutely. The history that sits there. Mm. And, and, and the, the challenge is that everybody mistrusts an employer. Mm. And, and it's probably a, a, a something that you don't get taught, mm. but hearing your parents at home yapping away about how employers are abusing their employees and mm. all of that probably gets ingrained into mm. us. You can't blame people. Absolutely. I mean, and, 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 but you go even further. I mean, then at a point where you, get it, you join the association of public speakers and all of that, you, I mean, you end up with another chairmanship, not because of anything else, but purely because what did you do there? Same thing. So I come with the same operandi. Um, I'm in corporate at the time, yeah. but I've now discovered I've discovered that there's this thing called speaking. I joined the Professional Speakers Association yeah. of Southern Africa. And at that, at that point, when you go to these meetings and conferences of the PSA, same thing is happening, mm -hmm. right? Because 
obviously you, people are hosting the conference there's a lot of things to do mm. uh, but i still have that same mindset that i've seen this thing i've seen the exposure that it gives me i'm gonna get there they are struggling with the registration table no one is manning the registration table so i raise my hand hey guys can i just mend that registration table I will help people register and so on. Uh, they don't know who I am. They don't know who this guy is. But, you know, things must happen. So yes. that's fine. That's fine. Do that. And then I do this um, for, for I think, something like three years. Men the registration table. And at that time, the association doesn't have full-time staff. Mm. So any help is welcome. So you start saying now, OK, I'll print the name tags as well. I have a printer. I'll print the name tags. I bring the name tags. Suddenly, everybody knows you. Mm. You are in this association for about two years to three years. Mm. Uh, other people who've joined the same time as you don't even know who you are. Yeah. Uh, but the seasoned speakers now know you because every time Time they come in there's this friendly face who is welcoming them one day we're having a meeting we are going to be um, electing the president of the Gauteng chapter yeah. at the PSA and then someone who's quite seasoned in the association one of the original founders actually nominates me and say uh, for the presidents I'd like to nominate Spiwe he's been serving here for three years and and we've all seen him I want him to be the president of the Gaute suddenly you get a unanimous vote everybody's like yeah man this guy can be our president and, and I get elected simply just because of serving and 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 I think you know as much as we need to be cognizant of other things mm. and and all of that you have to understand that that people need help when you're running an association when you're running a business you're always looking for assistance you you're not doing it at that time because you're positioning yourself mm. but the impact on our careers is amazing you're just helping but because people want in end up trusting you mm. you're given a responsibility to do this Spiro, this is an important issue because the, 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 and, 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 and it also talks about what one can do, you know, and could have done mm. during COVID and post COVID and mm. which is, you know, a lot of the stuff that you raise in, in, in your next move mm. is in and around this raising your hand. Mm. And, 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 and you keep on repeating it. Like mm. the number of time I've, what they call it, I've, mm. I've gone through the books and, mm. and you keep on saying, raise your hand. Mm. Mm. And, and, and I've, I, I can almost hear a youngster there saying, I've been raising my hand for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am not... Let, let's demystify yeah. this raising your hand. Yeah. Because it's not just that I'll do it. It's, yeah. it's you being able to say, well, here's a few solutions on, on what can yeah. be done. Absolutely. And yeah. it's a core theme, yeah. this idea. And it's so funny. I was hosting my own conference last week. Yeah. And so I'm hosting a conference in, in Soweto. I've brought in my friends. I've brought in some corporate guys. It's a big conference that I'm just trying to help other people to, to get another chance in life, right? And I arrived there. You know when you're hosting a conference now, uh, there's a lot of moving parts, you know? And suddenly, uh, people use the same strategy against me. I, I, when I arrive yeah. at the conference, I've been advertising two hours before. These two young people that I do know, yeah. they, they come there to me and they say, um, sorry, uh, I, can we have the same t-shirts that you're having? We're here to help you. I'm like, well, well, sorry, what do you mean? No, 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 no. There's a lot of things that we must do here. That we're here to help you. And, and, and because obviously I have all kinds of moving parts, I grab T-shirts, I give them. Suddenly these guys are doing exactly what I was doing in those days yes. um, that I was doing. They are raising my hands. Why? When I'm hosting just the same I way know. that the other guys were stressed. I'm stressed. I have a whole lot of things. Anyone who says I can help, mm. I will never forget. Right? I'm busy with proposals right now to do some of the work, and I'm thinking about them, that I saw the attitude of that guy. I saw how that guy after the conference was helping me um, doing this, and I want to work with them. I'm literally, now I, there's a, there's a sense of reciprocity now that I'm thinking about. I have to find this guy some, there's no reason why this guy should be unemployed. Yeah. I'm trying to find. So, so it's, a, it's a constant theme that, that many of the people that we even want mentorship from, yeah. 
they are extremely busy. Um, they're extremely busy. They try to mentor us. But most of the time, when these people are having such events, you come there, you just help. Um, suddenly, you've opened the door for them to help. So it's a really key theme. I've seen it work. Uh, some of the people that I am mentoring right now also came to me with that same strategy mm -hmm. and were doing business together. So it really, really works. You have to raise your hand. A lot of people are saying this doesn't work, and I'll tell you why they say this doesn't work. And, 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 and people always want to volunteer up. Yes, yes, yes. And mm. we have to talk about that, mm. because mm. everybody volunteers up. Yes. If, 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 if it's Everybody doesn't volunteer where they yeah. are, or even volunteer down. Mm. They volunteer up. It's like, mm. okay. A team needs to be led, and now I, I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and then let's talk about the yeah. groundwork that has to be done yeah. in and around this. And then, you know, you talk a lot about that, yeah. about the fact that it's not just about using, yeah. well, I can lead. It's, mm. it's, a, it's what you put into it. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's, it's what you put into it. And, and one of the things I've learned is that, you know, uh, first of all, never underestimate peer-to-peer type of coaching and mentoring it yeah. really really works uh, i've i've been peer mentored and coached by my friends and 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 i argue that for me if the only time you are excited about something is when you are the one leading i i question your heart a lot you know there has to be a point where you are helping in you know things that uh, they might not look even glamorous. Mm -hmm. You you are not seen on that stage. You know you are. Nobody knows who you are. You are just volunteering because you are volunteering. And I think for me, remember some of sometimes we want to access certain networks, mm -hmm. right? We want and people says ah. They don't open mm. the doors to but their networks. Apparently, uh, you don't want us to to, to meet your networks mm. and so on. And and what you what you have to understand is that the easiest way uh, that many people are going to trust you with certain environments is just seeing you do some work, just seeing you help, just seeing you do whatever you are doing there, not intentionally because you are trying to access networks. So for me, uh, self-promotion is important, but I think the biggest thing that can promote one is just the heart to serve. Mm -hmm. And I think we don't talk a lot about the heart to serve. We don't talk a lot about just servant leadership. Mm -hmm. We don't talk a lot about, I just want to help you. Uh, because many of us are always in network mode. Many of us are always in, we want to be in the VIP lounge mode. Mm -hmm. And for me, for me, I can tell you now that uh, VIP lounges and so on, they have not given me what servant wood and servant leadership has given me. Some of the reasons I can be able to call certain people is not because I met them through a friend who met them. Mm -hmm. I was just that guy serving. Um, I was just here. I was just in the vicinity, not looking for a microphone, mm -hmm. but that, that, that we need to, to, to serve. I think it's a, we need to go back to that heart of serving. As they say, if following is below you, yeah. leading is above you. Sure. And that is important for people yeah. to be able to be comfortable with yeah. it. If following is below you, sure. leadership is above you. Wow. Because a lot of people struggle with sure. following. And, 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 and I always explain that you cannot just lead. Mm. You have to actually be able to be a good follower yeah. so that you can recognize what it means for you to lead. Absolutely. And how difficult it is. Mm. And, 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 but I want to go back to something out of the seven mm -hmm. wood that you're talking about. I get a lot of people who actually don't do well in what they do mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Sort of their current way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's always the guy who wants to be promoted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this thing. You call yourself a, 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 a lifelong student of, yeah. of, 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 you know, organizational behavior yeah. and, and HR. <laughs> and educate me about those things, Pew. I, I don't get it, and I've been in leadership for a very long time. Yeah. yeah. I, look, I, I think everybody wants career progression. I, I think many people never take enough time 
to understand how even that thing called career progression work. Mm. Um, I, I use this analogy that um, if you want to play, let's stick to your team. If you want to play for Mami Lodi Sundowns <laughs> and, and you're currently for playing... Let's stick with the winners. Stick to the winners. <laughs> stick to the winners. Um, if you want to play for Sundowns mm. and let's say at the moment you're playing for Barroca mm. and, and, but you start thinking that Barroca is beneath you. Yes. You start thinking they don't deserve me. I'm way too good for Barroca. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. But what's going to happen is if you start thinking like that and you don't give the best for Barroca, mm. when you are playing for Barroca, what's going to happen is Barroca won't field you. Um, you won't get into the field. And if you're not getting into the field, uh, Sundowns will not see you with your greatness. And therefore, uh, interestingly enough, and even counterintuitively, yes. if you want to move and you believe your current role, is you've outgrown your current role. You actually must perform excellently in your current role mm. in order for you to move. But many people, unfortunately, uh, many people uh, do not have the self-awareness. And I think self-awareness is something that we don't spend a lot of time mm -hmm. thinking and talking about to say, look, even in that current role, you are not great. And, and, and many people have not studied things like self-awareness, just knowing self, just looking in the mirror and saying, what is it that I can do? And they're also not showing initiative to ask their leaders to say, um, look, when you look at my current role, let's say I have five KPIs, mm -hmm. which ones do you think I'm fully performing and which ones do you think I still need a room for improvement? And don't do those things during performance management cycles because I know during performance management cycles, you're also thinking, hey, this thing is going to affect my increase. Do it when there's no performance. Just ask for good, regular feedback. Tell your leader that you're not fishing for compliments, but you just want proper feedback. And if you have proper feedback, then it increases your self-awareness. You know which gaps you must fill before you want that promotion. But because many of us, first of all, don't have self-awareness, because we are not intentional about our careers, we never really ask ourselves those difficult questions of, where am I right now? Because really, to be honest, your next role is always trapped in your current role. If you want to go to the next role, you have to master your current role. I want to... You know, I've got so many questions running through my head right sure. now, but I want to go down into the self-awareness sure. issue. And, 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 and the issue with self-awareness and, and that I find a bit challenging mm -hmm. for a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, young people and even seasoned mm -hmm. uh, 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 professionals mm -hmm. is that let's talk about teamwork within the self-awareness mm -hmm. bit of it. Mm -hmm. Because to me, uh, uh, a lot of people, they want to be promoted and mm -hmm. be raised to the next level. Mm -hmm. But half the time, they're not team players. Mm, mm. And, and there's, there's another thing that I don't understand. Mm. It's how are you going to play nicely with other people's kids mm. when you're not willing to play with them when you're at the same level? Yeah, yes. yeah. Look, look I, I think one of the things that I don't know where this thing came from yeah. is when people underestimate what they call soft skills. And for me, there's nothing soft about, soft yes. about these skills. These are actually the hard skills. Um, things like self-awareness, things like emotional intelligence, uh, things like how to play nicely with other kids. It's things that people frown upon. It's things that they think, oh God, um, can they just teach me finance? But when you start studying, um, particularly when you want to move into leadership and so on, you start realizing it's the emotional intelligence piece. Mm -hmm. It's the self-awareness piece that then shows you that, that if you want to move and progress, how you work with other people is the most critical role. Uh, do you make me shine or, or don't you make, do you help? Do you help me? All those things are so critical. But I think most of the times, people look down on those skills. And those are the skills that we actually need. Uh, because when you move into leadership, you start realizing that your technical competences are still needed, but the ability to work with people and the ability to inspire people, mm -hmm. the ability to understand the strengths of another individual and, and try and position them according to those strengths, mm -hmm. those are the things that matter a lot in leadership. So sometimes 
we say no one is promoting us, but maybe our leaders are looking at the way we're working, we're, are looking at the way I'm undermining people already, and they're thinking, yo, if this guy got into leadership, that department would fall. So we need to study things like leadership. We need to study things like self-awareness. We need to invest time on emotional intelligence. We need to invest time on team dynamics. We need to understand conflict we need to understand working with other people those are the things that matter the the more you grow in your leadership journey while we're building on that and you said something that sort of you know brings me to an issue that is important to me self-awareness is not you being arrogant and mm. i'm and, and i and, and we need to be able mm. to mm. to actually dispel that because mm. a lot of people think no, I'm self-aware. I'm mm. capable of everything that I can do and mm. everything else. So, mm. um, and in actual fact, you know, the problem here is that, you know, I'm perfect, and the problem is with you, it's all of you. you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have to talk about that yeah. because we, we we find ourselves in challenging positions because yeah. of the way we think. Yes, yes, but th that's definitely not self-awareness. You yes. know, one of one of the one of the one of the activities that a, any human being can do. Mm is to do a, that 360 feedback with people, uh, not only with people who's, who's, who report to you, mm -hmm. right? Because people who report to you, sometimes they're thinking of the, it could be a career limiting move and suddenly you don't even know. One of the things that you have to do is to find people uh, whom you trust, people who can call you out, yeah. people who might be in your same level, you have a good relationship with, and just ask them a simple question. Uh, when you look at my leadership journey, when you look at, at the way I, I operate, what is it that you think I should stop, start, or continue? Yeah. Uh, when you look at the way I come across, do you think there's one or two things that you think I should stop? Mm -hmm. Do you think there's one or two things that you should think how oh, you're doing well, they continue? Or do you think there's a few things that I need to start? Uh, and, and that is what's going to help you to actually become self-aware. Because I find, actually, that the, the greatest of leaders are, are so generous. You know, they make you feel that you are talented as well. Mm -hmm. You know, once w when you're sitting among um, great leaders, it's amazing that great leaders make you feel that I'm good, I'm doing well. But the people who are telling us that I'm the man, I'm the woman, everybody else is not doing well, uh, maybe you don't have as much self-awareness like you do, and you do need a few people around you, uh, personal board of advisors that you mm -hmm. can just ask them good questions and people whose career progress is not dependent on you because if you're going to ask us every one of us is in our team will tell you how good you are but you need to ask colleagues you need to belong to some kind of a mastermind group where uh, you can help each other I, I, I like that idea and 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 and, and i think we, we we have to build on it and and in the sense of you know you talk about how to find a mentor or a mm. coach Mm. And, and 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 the things that you mustn't you must not do like mm. it's, it's it's quite an interesting bit i'm mm. think i i also found it very intriguing don't don't call and go and shoot the breeze mm. Mm. go with a proper question mm. but what are these questions mm. and what are the likely types of questions that somebody can go to a mentor or somebody who they want to mentor them mm. and say can you help me out with this yeah, yeah. in my experience um, yeah. mentors Mentors are actually the ones who choose mentees, not the other way around. Yes. Even if as a me pro potential me mentee you are going to approach, it's yeah. the mentor who will say, yeah, that one I can, I can go. And there's a few things that you need to do, in my view, to be able yeah. to, to attract the attention of a potential mentor. First of all, um, you should have been seen to have started something. So you should be uh, mentors like people who are doers as well. Yeah. You know, they, they, they want to see themselves in you somehow. They're like, oh, maybe that's a younger version of me. I remember this. I remember when I was hustling. I remember when I was trying. And, and therefore, uh, if, if you have started positioning yourself, you are also growing, they tend to, attract, to be attracted to you a little bit more. But the other thing that just puzzles me yeah. is... I think we have, we've started having this culture of ambush, that, that 
wherever you see them, it's an opportunity. You must use every opportunity. And now someone is going to a meeting, you're ambushing them, giving your entire uh, five minutes elevator pitch. Mm. And, and, and I think, you know, for me, that idea is more annoying than it is showing initiative. There's a difference between showing initiative and, and just not respecting somebody else's space. And for me, if you really want to approach a mentor um, and, and if it's someone that you don't have access to, that maybe you're connected to on LinkedIn, you should be able to say, uh, I would love you to mentor me. This is the reason. This is what I know about you already. This is what I've done in my part. And this is what I, have, what I need help with uh, in any way possible, whether it's one-on-one -on -one mentorship or whatever. I think that would help. I think that that decency and respect for me, I think we're losing it because people are like, we're hustling. We must hustle, yes, show initiative way, but uh, I don't think it's right to be uh, to to get to a point where you can annoy people just because when you want to be mentors. And many people, I think, are misunderstanding that. Uh, just that courtesy, respect, show them why. Uh, what is it in them that you want to learn? I think people will be more open to that. Intriguing. I'm at an energy and power conference and I had just come off the stage and mm. I'm actually was waiting for somebody who wanted to have a meeting with me. Mm. This young man walks up to me and he completely asked me a completely different question about leadership. Mm. Mm. And he says to me, so he just gives me a bit of background about mm. him, he runs mm. his own business and this and that and everything else. And he says, what are the two things that you think are important in leadership? Mm. We proceeded to have a probably a 10 minutes conversation, wow. just standing around while I was waiting for the person I was meeting with. Mm. Just purely because it just intrigued me. Mm. I mean, you hear me speaking about energy, engineering mm. related things, but mm. um, for you, you were seeing leadership rather than you were seeing anything else. Mm. And it, 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 to me, I was willing to give him my time because it was just one of those things. It wasn't like, yeah, I know, I want to come and do business with you. And that I find awkward. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and for me, it is important that you, 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 you find tech. Continuing with all of that, mm -hmm. I want to address something that is important, and I think you, you, you bring it up. I think you're the only person who's ever, ever written a 4x4 four four matrix uh, in Kasi language. <laughs> 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 and I think it should be adopted for Harvard and... and <laughs> yes. Now, there's what I call the McDonald's life, you know, the, the, or, or probably not not mentioned, but, but the takeaway or the drive-through career logic. Yes, yes. This rushing around. Mm. Mm. And we got to talk about that because mm. there's, there's the bit where people, you know, they have a high earner, mm. but they have very low long-term longevity mm. in what they do. Mm. And there are some people who, you know, they have long-term longevity, but they're not any, mm. you know? Mm. And, 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 you know, they are just surviving and they're picking up the crumbs and, as you call it in Zulu, and, mm. and, um, and then there's Abus Kapeni. Mm. Mm. Now, everybody wants to be Abus Kapeni. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there is a process to getting there. Sure. I mean, for you to get out of, you know, as mm -hmm. you call it, in mm -hmm. the one part of the 4x4 matrix, mm -hmm. and then to get into the area where you now are, and you don't go across. A lot of people don't understand mm -hmm. that. you got to go through mm -hmm. one of the two mm -hmm. places. Either people see you as Umlilo Oma Pepe, you know, it's just quick success and yes. it's not going anywhere. Yes. And then to pivot to the other side, you then will have to go across. Mm -hmm. Or you're picking up the crumbs and then now you work hard enough to go up. Yes. But let's talk about that a bit, you know. First yeah. explain the what they call the 4 by 4 matrix <laughs> that you built with pure Kasi language. With pure Kasi language, <laughs> yes. absolutely. I... So, so for me, I used to get a lot of people who say, people, can you guys stop lying to us? And I think mm. people even say this even now. Can you just stop lying to us and giving these speeches and whatever? The truth is, all we need in this life is connections. Yes. Give us your connections, finish and clear, stop with the halabaloo. And, and I think there is some merit to that, but what many people don't understand, and so when I built this 4 matrix, for me, career success 
is about a balance of two things. So uh, social capital on the one side, okay. which is, is networks, we all need good mm. relationships. But on the other side is skill and effort. Yes. So the ability to just have the skills, acquire skills, and just work hard. Mm. And, and so when I have these quadrants, uh, if, you, if you imagine a quadrant with four boxes, you have this social capital or relationships on the one hand, you have skills and effort. When you are on this left, that means you have low uh, relationships, you don't have much mm -hmm. relationships, but also your skills and effort are non-existent. You are lazy, mm -hmm. you also don't have the skills. I call that quadrant which means you're probably not going to have much career success, you know. All, all that matters to you is life. That's a dry, direct translation. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the relationship, but you also don't have the effort. Mm -hmm. And and But if you have a relationships, which is, you have high relationships, which is good, but you still don't have skills and effort. These are the people who have good connections, you have good relationships, mm -hmm. But still, you don't have a skill. We call that one umlilo So you're going to have success quickly. Yes. But your success is really dependent on this one person in the organization whom you might have a relationship with, um, sustaining that relationship. When that person da, uh, when that person leaves the organization or whatever, um, suddenly you, you, are, you, you can't sustain whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And I argue that even, if, even when you do have relationships, you still need skill and effort to sustain. Maybe that relationship has helped open that door. Someone is giving you a chance. But once you are in that door, you need skills and effort to even sustain. Mm -hmm. and, and many people underestimate this type that, you know, even if I'm an executive or a manager in corporate, um, and I go source service providers, mm -hmm. um, a lot, a lot is hinging on that. So there's a, my reputation is at stake as well. So we need to make sure that those people have skills and effort. That's the one. That's the one. The the third quadrant, which is somewhere here on the right, is okay. Maybe this peop, this person does have skills and they do work hard, but unfortunately they don't have much relationships. Yeah, and and in that in that in that quadrant you are going to have, um, you know, uh, what I call him Vutuluga, which means you're going to get the crumbs. Yeah. Yes, you will have work, but you have to work hard. You're going to burn out because the more you're, you're, just, getting you're just getting by, you're yeah. always surviving. So you still need to, but that's a better one. You yeah. have skills, you have effort, you're not lazy. All that needs to happen is that to get into the right rooms and someone needs to open the door. And I find that many people would be more willing to open a door for someone like that. Yes. Then you start building relationships. The quadrant that we all want to be in, the Escape uh, and the yes. uh, where high degrees of success because you have relationships, but you also have skill. Uh, it takes time to get there. It takes time to, first of all, to get there, you need to build genuine genuine relationships. Yeah. One of these the microwave culture is that nobody's interested in building genuine relationships anymore. Um, it's about, look at the young man you were talking about. Yeah. That young man wants to talk leadership. Mm -hmm. He's asking you about leadership. That's all he wants yeah. at that point in time. Um, he's not asking you, we must do business now. Can we just sometimes just have good quality Conversation. relationships, conversations, and we build trust, people know you, and not these um, relationships where uh, you can tell that there's nothing genuine there. You can tell that even when you're talking, this person is like, give me your business card, dude, stop this. Uh, and I think that that's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. I think we want to make sure we build genuine relationships on one hand, but we also want to make sure that we must build skills. Mm -hmm. We must make sure that we continuously be building skills. One of the things that you don't want if you're an entrepreneur uh, is, you know, not improving your skills because then then your client outgrow you because because you are not growing, the clients are growing. If we are sitting here, uh, Tepo reads a lot, I know for a fact. You are reading and, and I'm supposed to be helping you and then do you like, ah, but this guy, this guy is not growing. So there's something that's not going, yes. that's something that's not going to work. Build skills and effort, build relationship, then suddenly you're going to have sustainable uh, success. You know, one of the things that I find quite strange and maybe going back to the issue of relational capital, mm -hmm. what is it that makes us not to be able to build proper relational capital? Mm -hmm. 
is that this need to give what to you know scapini yeah. and therefore yeah. what what makes that and and, and 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 probably we need to explore that a little yeah. bit because i find it has to be the most perennial thing that yeah. has stopped a lot of people from making it anyway yeah that's true i think i think there's a variety of things one of them is um i think there's a lot of this consumerism there's a lot of this uh, i call it the rotman culture <laughs> it's it's um, what is the rotman culture <laughs> <laughs> it's about you know the word Rotman yes. uh, in 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 Africans just means an elder brother, but yeah. now it has new connotations. Okay. It means the most successful one in the room, where everybody must now uh, bow before you. Yeah. And so the, the, there's a lot of uh, things where people are like, "Yo, I've got to be that Rotman now." Mm -hmm. There's a there's there's this sense that you know I must be successful. And I must be seen to be successful, and 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 I must have people around me who are going to also just you know hover around me and show. And I think that's not right. And so what happens is uh, many people in this quest to succeed now, yes. um, they can't even see a good relationship uh, because I must succeed now. And and many people see someone who's an executive, they look at you like the COO, um, nobody asks you about the you things that here? you've had to do, to things that you've had to do. Nobody asks you about your journey. Nobody asks you what are some of the things that you have to invest. And there are, there's this agency to succeed now, oh. which I really don't understand. It's, it's one of the things where we must go back to the basics. There is no rush. You must be able to build a solid ground um, and when you've built a solid ground, and, and let's have friends. That's why I, I sometimes say to people, um, people are like, ah, man, you know, Kendra, you are connected and whatever. I'm like, I'm not sure about this connected thing. I just have friends. I really have proper friends that we sit and we talk and we have fun. And some of them in these conversations, there's no hey, manji proposal. There is nothing. We are just sitting, uh, having fun. And what then happens is, if I'm thinking of an opportunity, um, I, I know what someone does. I know what you might end up, you know, referring that person to someone, but not because the gist of our friendship was referrals and whatever, but because I know you do the work anyway. So I think we just need to go back to and to have friends. We probably we need to stop calling connections and network and just build friendships. One of the most powerful things that I've seen is that you have friends and we are growing together and suddenly someone sees me with you, uh, we've been friends for 20 years, growing together, and they're like, ah, oh, man, can you just give me a tepo's mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? Why? Uh, can we establish good friendships? Can we chill with people? We are not trying to block certain things, but there has to be a bit of a decorum as well. I can't just give you someone's number like that because I also don't use their number in that way. Mm -hmm. If I'm chilling with somebody on a weekend, we're talking books, we're talking this, can we just have those kinds of friendships? But I think we're in a hurry. You know, a friend of mine once said, and, and, and it was one of the most profound statements, and we were having the same conversation. Mm. He said, mm. you know, the problem with um, the connection, mm. you know, the, the extension cable, when it's on that wall <laughs> mm. and it's plugged in, yes, even when that plug is off, it's still a connection. Mm. Be careful of having connections wow. because the power might not be running through the <laughs> connection. Yes, yes. He says, rather build networks. Yes. He says, when the grid falls on yeah. the one bit, yeah. we raise it up. Well, now, uh, yeah. now lately we're not cheating. <laughs> that, that analogy doesn't work very well. But, uh, but uh, to me, I, I like found that it. to be very profound. I like that. It. Be careful of connections because yeah. even when the plug is off, yeah. The, the, that cable that is connected in there, it still has a connection. It still does. It, uh, and some connections have yeah. no power in them. Yeah. And you have to be careful yeah. with that. And I, I found that to be like very, very profound, that you, 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 you can't just be connected yeah. all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you gave as advice, you know, during the, uh, the COVID times. Mm. To me, I think, it, it, in actual fact, 
what what I, I, I probably would love for you to do later on is mm -hmm. when you revise the book is, uh, uh, and just adapt it to sort of, because a lot of that advice is actually perennial advice. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, it, it, it actually mm -hmm. has very little less to do with the disruption than actually being able to be the advice True. that people have to be able to work with. Now, you talk about adaptability and, 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 and resilience mm -hmm. um, in, in, in the book when you, you know, you give a lot of advice of what mm. people should do, having, you know, you know, likeliness of losing their job mm. um, and all sorts of other things. But before we get to career adaptability mm. and resilience, these days everybody says you can't survive on one career. Mm. Mm. And, 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 and you probably are the best uh, uh, example of, you know, going from one move to another mm. just purely by you building up mm. your speaking career mm. let's get back to how you got into mm. speaking and then come back to the idea of building adaptability mm. and resilience in, in in essence that i think that's 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 so great because in the speaking industry many people always say um i want to be a motivational speaker and so on and that's that's fine but when i when i joined the professional speakers association and again, and, and, and it will sound like I'm emphasizing this a lot, mm -hmm. I just joined to learn, mm -hmm. right? That, that was the main thing. And one of the things I learned, and they emphasize this quickly, is that we need to be experts who speak, mm -hmm. not speakers. And, and what that means is, uh, when you come to a speaking industry and you have a profession, you have, mm -hmm. you have something that you study, something that you research, something mm -hmm. that you observe, and something that you've done, you are going to gain a lot of credibility quite quickly yes. as well because there's something. So I, I, when I got into the speaking industry, I got into the speaking industry while I still have um, had my job. I think my at that time was at, at NetBank and FNB. I joined the association. Luckily, most of the meetings are after hours, and you start learning um, the ropes. And you are not in a hurry. You are you're just literally learning because. First of all, you haven't resigned. You still have a good uh, paycheck. You are not trying to put yourself under pressure. And one of the things you learn is to build this thing called depth. Um, in, 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 in a lot of career conversations, we, one of the best advices that I've ever learned is to build what we call a T career. Yes. And, and a T career really is about, so as opposed to an I career. So, when you have an eye career, that means you have depth in in, in, in one field, subject, uh -huh. and and that's still important, yes. and that's that's the conversation that you have, because there's no T without that part of the T. Yes. So that means there has to be something that you are known for. Yes. There has to be something where you build depth, so that uh, so that when you get to be in a conversation like this. Yes. Um, where you're expected to converse on something, we can tell if you just Googled something. <laughs> and conversations like this can actually uh, show, show that, I ah, know, you had Googled that speech. Yes. So you still need to have depth. It's important to have a profession and go de deep on it. But the nice thing about the tea career is that then you also build a bit of breath. That's where the adaptability piece comes in. You also learn other things. You study the world of work. You you know a little bit of ops, a little bit of marketing, a little bit of anything, so that you are conversant in, in a lot of things. But I think it's still important to build a bit of depth. What what the, these other skills, the T skills, they're about adaptability, they're about being promotable even yeah. outside of your area, which means those things are still important because you want to be a specialist, but you also want some of your leaders in your organization to say, who's the most adaptable let's say we have a role that was not even there before mm -hmm. who is the most likely person that can immerse themselves in this role quite quickly so it's still important to show that you can go a bit broad but also a t career still demands that you build a bit of depth as well interesting enough you know as i was reading uh, uh, the books mm. uh, the, the strangest thing about it is i could tell at what point i did what 
Is it? I could literally tell mm. at one point, and I thought, um, they, they, I love the way you write. It's like mm. short, punchy, uh, what do they call it, chapters. Yes. There isn't a need. In actual fact, when I got into the first book, and I thought, this man is playing a hundred <laughs> chapters. <laughs> <laughs> but soon I got into a groove of it, and yes. I read through what do they call it, stagnation was what. Yes. But let's go back to the issue of the tea career, and, mm. and I want to give a, 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 you know, a, a practical example. Mm. So in the company I used to work for, um, we find ourselves without a BE certificate. Okay. I'm a project manager through and through. I'm mm. a PMP, I'm a project management professional. I'm an engineer by trade, mm. but I am a project manager. Mm. I, you know, I worry about milestones when this gets done and all sorts of things, and I have that operational mind. That's mm. how I, I, I function. Mm. But I find we, we find ourselves as, as a company without a BE certificate. Mm. A client is threatening to, what do they call it? Uh, to cancel the project that I actually work on. Sure. In the middle of all of that, and I'm talking with a couple of friends who says, hey, we're in trouble. Mm. This is probably a hundred uh, by year mm. uh, billing. Mm. Uh, it's just about to disappear just sure. like that. Now, out of nowhere, I decided now, I want to be able to understand this BE thing. Mm. Mm. I get to understand it. And then with a group of my friends, we propose a solution. Mm. And that solution was how do we get the business just purely to a level for the contributor mm. from being non-compliant. From being non-compliant, mm. you have no you have no B certificate, mm. and that takes multiple nights of diving into what do they call it, into uh, data. You know, mm. you, uh, a lot of people don't understand when you look at a B certificate, you actually look at the entire organization's mm. data. Mm. Uh, from human resource and employment equity, from skills development in that area, uh, from how we do business with other businesses in enterprise development, from how we spend money socially, from social economic development, to who leads the company, who, what do they call it, owns the company. And that's data that you wouldn't naturally be given. Mm. Mm. Just like that. In actual fact, the, 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 the financial director was refusing to give me the data of the shareholders mm. at the end of the conversation. He says, no, I'll give it directly to the BE uh, uh, agency. Uh, agency. Yeah. And I said, no, it's fine. You can do that. But remember, the data has to be constructed in such a way that that person can understand mm. it. And then he looked at me and said, and then ultimately, you know, to cut a long, short, uh, 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 a, a long story short, that's ultimately how everybody said, look, this transformation thing actually needs somebody to look after it. Mm. In actual fact, explain mm. to us how we restructure our board. Sure. Um, and therefore, how we're going to end up being compliant and going to the next level. Mm. Now, I am busy with restructuring an organization. I'm not even a director in that company mm. at that point in time. Mm. I'm just but one of the very senior people mm. in, in the organization. Sure. And ultimately, that's how one gets to be able to say, okay, we think you should come through into the board and be the person responsible for transformation on the whole entire organization. Sure. Sure. But the nights that I spend trolling through the, da the data of the company and also other things, and ultimately constructing the point at which we end up with a uh, level 4 BE certificate, Nobody wants to see that. Everybody mm. just says, ah, this guy. Mm. Everybody loves him. Um, and ultimately, one had to build this. The, and I had to understand every part of the business mm. so that when I articulated to the B verification agency, I knew what I was talking mm. about. And it was a short space of time. Mm. I mean, the client was threatening to cancel the contract in a month sure. and we Man. managed to yes we managed to get through all of the data and present it and get a, a BE certificate in two weeks oh my sure now that's when you start and, and it look it was a quick pivot mm. but it, it is something that one gets into and mm. then now I get to know but I have to understand this thing better mm. Uh, mm. So that we view it as probably a fluke in our part, mm. but uh, now I need to understand this so that I can build a strategy. Mm. And ultimately, I find myself in a space where I have access to every part of the organization. Sure. Everybody used to refer to me as the de deputy CEO mm. because when I said I wanted something, you needed to give mm. it to me because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know why I needed it. But that is how you actually ultimately create a T-shaped career. And as an engineer, a lot of people ask me, I mean, I sit on, on, on the board of uh, two, three companies mm. and uh, that are intended for enterprise development and socioeconomic development. Sure. That is outside of my engineering career. Mm. 
and, and it's that's under, where it started. That's where it started. Sure. That's where people started recognizing me as being bored, uh, what do they call it, bored material, mm. because I was willing to do something that nobody was willing sure. to do. Um, but let's continue about the but idea that's of... good career uh, advice. I don't want <laughs> us to skip it, because <laughs> that is such solid, solid advice. And I'm thinking here, I'm sitting here and thinking, the, the, you pivoted with that with BE, but yeah. how many how many other things leaders are sitting in the boardroom? There's a new act. Uh, there's Bubia. There's whatever they're thinking. Oh my goodness, who's going to take this? Well, if there's one person willing to say, I'll take that, and then immerse themselves in that thing, suddenly you are a specialist. You've created a tea carry. I love it. Love it. Love it. You know, talking about that sort of a thing, and and the issue of raising one's hands. Mm. So we're sitting in a meeting and um, we're discussing the issue of how to get uh, the, you know, a single ticket for the whole of the province. Mm, mm. So I know a lot about ticketing, mm. but at that point in time, the leadership goes, you sound like you know what you're doing, you take it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, today a lot of people that know me and have seen me in a number of conferences actually think I have a technology qualification. Mm. And I actually had to learn on the job mm. from talking too much in the meeting to now ending up with a project at hand. Mm. Now of lately you cannot, you know, the issue of data management of what do they call it of transport at the next level and and through that I had gotten to be able to understand that it is very easy to pivot your career. Mm. It's just that you need to raise your hand. Mm. Mm. And in the middle of that, I have one of the most complex jobs you could ever, ever have. Mm. I mean, even before I became the CEO, the job I had before as the Senior Executive for Technical Services, mm. that's still one of the most complex jobs you could mm. hold in the health rate. Mm. Um, that's a person who actually literally runs the system and manages the system mm. to a great degree. That, that's the agent in the business that does that. Mm. And there's a lot of information. And I was willing to take on another part because I realized that part is the part that actually was, is going to change my career forever. Mm, mm. And, 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 and the, the, the issue I want to come to, and which is important, is that let's talk about lifelong learning. Because mm -hmm. there's this sense of a lot of people, well, before they get disgruntled and say, well, my career is finished, and you start writing the obituary for the career, <laughs> as you call it. <laughs> I, I found that an, an interesting, uh, uh, you've got a way with language, yeah. an, an obituary, before you write the obituary of your career. <laughs> Let's talk about before people start writing the obituary yeah. of their career. No, and, no, and this it's... issue of lifelong learning, because I wanted to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 just, I just love the conversations. I've loved the entire conversation, but what you've just said in the last few minutes or so for me gets into the gist of us thinking about our cares first of yeah. all each and every one of us must just own your career yeah. you have to start realizing that nobody really can be that interested in your care more than you right people are trying to run businesses here yeah. um, we're not leaders are not always thinking about you and your careers and and sometimes the reason you end up doing something it's because there was a need, you were there, and you tried to solve that need, and you pivot into this thing. So we have to learn all the time. And, and, and someone who has taught, who's teaching at business schools and, and who have a bit of a formal education and so on, one of the things that I love stressing is the fact that learning is not always formal education. And therefore, we... In this changing world that we live in, you have to obsess about learning. Mm. But also, you have to understand how easy it is to be a, 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 a perpetual learner these days. It is so easy. So as an example, if you're watching this conversation right now, you are doing informal learning, right? Mm. It's just a conversation, but you might have picked up something. I watch a lot of these conversations with other people. Okay. Um, I'm here now, but I've watched the conversations that you've had with Bonang Muhale, yeah. with uh, um, 
the other people that you've had, Ayabonga Tawe and so on. Mm. Because that's the part of informal learning. So I want to take a walk. I have data. I'm going to put in a podcast. Mm. I'm going to put in the, the e-lounge. I'm going to listen to a TED Talk. I'm going to go on LinkedIn Learning. Many people don't know. LinkedIn Learning, I think you pay something like 200 rands a month. That gives you access to a numerous number of courses. You do one hour a day while you're taking a walk, 30 minutes a day. Uh, you start understanding so, for example, uh, we were talking about the fact that you immersed yourself in BE. Uh, we have something called MOOCs, right? Yes. They're open source universities where you can learn anything about anything. You can take every course about a specific topic. And I'm telling you, in a few months, you can be a specialist in that course. So, th th so the resolve is that, first of all, you need to understand that learning never stops. Mm -hmm. Secondly, not all learning must be formal. Formal learning is great. G going to business schools is great. Mm -hmm. There's also a bit of building networks there, so it's great. But also there is informal learning. YouTube, there is inform uh, the things that we're doing now, the MOOCs, and all these things, that's where learning is. Learning also needs to be just in time, mm -hmm. right? I need something now, I can go on YouTube now and listen to a conversation now and be able to, to help solve the problem. So we always need to be learning. That is incredible that. Uh, so on my you know, part-time life when I relax from everything, I do uh, wildlife photography. Mm, mm. Uh, I've got equipment for this. It's a, sure. Don't ever get into it. It's a bad <laughs> habit. <laughs> it's an expensive Is bad it? habit. <laughs> it's just like golf. It's an expensive <laughs> bad habit. <laughs> and, 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 but the amazing thing of it, and, and, and my wife refers to it as the University of YouTube, Yes. As you can literally yes. sit in your own home sure. while you're doing simple things mm. and start learning how to use a you know a digital camera, a mm. DSLR. Mm. And from a DSLR then you start asking, okay, what's the best DSLR for you know taking wildlife photography? Mm. Then from there on out then and, and it, it, it helps you not to waste money also mm. because it helps you for you to not to buy the wrong camera and then have to trade it in That's and true. do all sorts of other things and and also other things that you you can learn mm. but the ability to actually use something and then ultimately build you know first your 1600 hours mm. that you have to put in to be able to do it properly and then finding that it becomes more fun mm. because when you start off a dslr is not the the kindest camera mm. you could ever have in your hand mm. um it it, it 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 requires you to understand you know uh, sometimes you think you've taken the picture and you review it and it's <laughs> blank no picture. <laughs> no, well that's the worst part <laughs> then you have not taken the, or you were too, you're not quick enough oh is it that you uh, there's, that, there's shot, nothing eh? there's just a blank shot yes, the way yes. you just have taken a shot of the road yes. uh, sometimes and also sometimes you make a mistake but you end up with actually a very beautiful picture mm. but those things you don't just learn mm. you you actually learn because all of us all of us we want to take a very perfect picture mm. and when you start to get to art, to bring the art into artistry mm. uh, then it, it's when now you then get to be able to understand oh if I took a a, a, a picture of whatever they call it of a uh, a zebra but I had taken half of the head like this and mm. you only have one side of it. Mm. If you look at it properly, you'll find the art in that mm. uh, more than anything mm. else. But that's, you know, to, 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 to re-emphasize re the issue of self-learning. Yeah. I'm self-taught. Um, I have a drone. Sure. I'm also self-taught. Mm. Uh, I have the, the, the most incredible drone shots of a lot of things. Mm. Uh, but I am self-taught mm. through, well, through you know uh, the different learning platforms where you sit down and you listen to the experts. Mm. Mm. Now let's talk about this thing of people don't want to sit down and sure. just listen to experts. Sure. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I think you know. First of all, there is. There is a sense that people don't read. There is a sense that people don't want information. One of the things I've tried to do in my books, and, and you've read them, is firstly to use a, a language that is accessible. Yes. I try and write like I speak. Like yes. You can hear that it's pure there. It's not yes. some other dude from California. Uh, so that uh, it, it sparks that interest in reading and so on. But I also know that... You know, that hunger for information mm -hmm. is something that every person must understand. There is no growth without learning. 
you can't. And I think one of the slogans that you have is, if, you, if you're going to be a leader, you must be a reader. Yes. Um, you have to. It's not even, a, if you're going to lead people, if you're going to know anything, you have to consume information. And, and for me, one of the ways to try and do that is to find out how you actually consume information. There are some of us who are very, uh, who can sit down and lose yourself in the book yes. for, for hours, but maybe you are more of a listener. And mm -hmm. you know, there's an app called Audible. Yes. You subscribe to that and you listen to audiobooks. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of information. Maybe you want to actually watch people on YouTube having this conversation. The bottom line is, um, if you're not going to read, you are going to be left behind. There is no doubt about it. If you're not going to consume information and listen to experts, there's no doubt about it. And also, for me, I, I don't take anyone serious if they say, um, you know, uh, you are the best whatever in in this field and, and whatever but you've never picked a book around that field uh, that's you know I, I remember I remember there's a guy who wanted to be on radio mm. right and and that guy who wanted to be on radio had listened to every radio presenter from Isi Zulu, uh, Kansas City, to uh, the, the Zwana guys, Abo, yes. uh, who was that guy, Peter Manzana, yes. and he doesn't even know Setswana, but yes. he tells you that I've listened to every radio presenter of my previous generation. Yes. I know what radio is, and therefore I can do. So if for me you say you love radio, but you've never listened to an, another radio person, you've never watched them, you never watched the art. For me, I really don't take you seriously. And I think uh, people need to understand, we all need to understand that you have to pay the price. There is there is a price to anything. Um, I, I When I talk to, to, to someone who I claim is a mentor and they have nine interviews on YouTube and I've never watched them. I'm lying. They are not my mentor. You know, if my mentor does interviews there on YouTube and I've never watched them, I cannot waste their time and say, can we please meet? Because what am I going to ask them? I'm going to ask them the same thing they said on an interview yeah. on, on YouTube. Then I'm playing around. And I think if you're going to take your career seriously, you're going to have to invest time in learning. You don't have to take yourself seriously. In other words, you can have fun. Mm -hmm. But your job and your career, you have to take it seriously. It's amazing that we've got all of these. I mean, you, this is one of the most underutilized yes. uh, tool you have. Yeah. And it can connect to your car, you can do all sorts of other things. And, and as you say, sure. I mean, sitting in traffic uh, yesterday, I just decided, well, if I'm going to sit two hours trying to get to something mm. in traffic, I might as well go back to a book that I had just been listening mm. to and I'm left with a few hours mm. of it. And I sat there and the book was completed sure. in the two hours trying to get uh, to something yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that is important mm. because a lot of people don't really actually know that they have so many tools that they can actually yeah. use to learn because yeah. learning on the go is learning on the go. Absolutely. Um, they, they, if you had to sit with Jack Welch's uh, uh, books, um, there's a way he writes and you might not like the language and everything else, but if you're listening to him in the background, there's a lot of learn from <laughs> Jack Welch. And when you're listening to somebody, it's a weird thing. You're able to say, this is the stuff I don't want to learn, mm. but this is the stuff I'll, I'll take with me uh, going forward. But mm. that's amazing. Now, let's talk about how the world of work is changing. Mm. And coming from, you know, uh, from ACE, uh, PBP, and, and, and everything else, and, you know, uh, and, 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 and all of that, and then ultimately being a an HR professional. Mm, mm. Um, you, you, you speak a lot about the next world. Mm, mm. But I find that South Africans, I mean, the, the people are talking about the gig economy. Mm. When I lived in England in, in 99 and 2000, mm. I already knew probably five of the people I worked with mm. in my team were actually already on the gig economy. Mm. And that is like, 22 years back, sure. um, there were youngsters who they just went into companies, uh, did drafting for engineers. I mean, the, you know, that frees me to be able to think through the design and everything else. And I just they do this and that. And mm. none of them actually work permanently for anybody. Mm. 
but I find that we as South Africans have not adapted to that. Mm. Can we talk a little bit about mm. that world and, 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 and the advantages of what it brings mm. Mm. to a great world where you, you, you're not fixed with a place mm. and you can be able to have the flexibility of what you want to do? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the gig economy or the freelance economy, as other yes. people put it, that, that many years ago, uh, the only freelancers that we knew in South Africa would be artists and DJs and so on, but there's a booming industry of, of, of freelancing. And, and, and you know, the, the world has changed so much that if you have a phone and you have a skill, you can do work for anybody around the world. Mm. You know, there are, there are platforms where you can sell your skill to anybody around the world. I think the most famous one is Fiverr, but mm. there are many, many others. And, and, and that's why, for me, you have to obsess with having a skill. Yes. It's impossible to be hungry when you have a skill. And, and what a skill helps you with, that even if you do not have, um, as people say, you don't have the networks and whatever, the skill can speak for you and you can, you can make money off your skills. So first of all, build your skill, know uh, and have a skill. But the, the freelance economy is incredible. That someone, I was speaking to a friend of mine um, today, she's, a South Afri she's South African and today she's, in, she's in somewhere in France. Mm -hmm. And she was saying she wanted to go to France, but she's still doing a bit of work for, for her base clients in South Africa. Mm -hmm. But it looks like she might just go to Amsterdam because of the idea that you can have a bit of flexibility, you can have skill. Many people talk about uh, location agnostic career now, that you, you, if, if, if you build skill and you are capable, you can literally work for a company in, in the Wall Street while you are here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, because geography has become obsolete. The idea of geography has become obsolete. You can work for anybody in the, in the world. Many of the things that we are doing, um, you might find that someone from India is helping you do something you don't know. Mm -hmm. So the world of work is changing in the sense that the gig economy is not coming, it is here. Mm -hmm. uh, many things that are happening in the world of work, even our careers have, are moving from ladder-based careers into jungle gyms yes. type of career, where, where many people misunderstand this. Your career growth is not only going to come from a vertical promotion. We we have com companies that are quite lean, mm -hmm. and and sometimes if if you only focus on the fact that the only way is to go up, you might not get there. Sometimes you must move sideways yes. because you know you know you understand that my growth is in that department. There's a lateral move that I can do in that department. I need to get that skill. That's very important. You move uh, and and understanding that. Uh, your, your, your career capital is not going to come from only vertical moves and you can do work anywhere in the world and, and, is, and we need to start thinking like, um, like world citizens. I, was, I think it was about a week ago, I was listening to a radio station that I didn't even know exists called Energy FM. I think it's based in Limpopo. Mm -hmm. and, and, and because of these apps and the world of work, suddenly if you're a DJ, um, for a, a radio station in Limpopo, even the way you think about what you're doing, you're not thinking I'm broadcasting for 100 people in my locality now. There's someone who's gonna get access to your work who has no idea where Limpopo is, and you have to take yourself seriously enough to invest yourself, understanding that it takes one person to discover your work in a platform mm -hmm. and suddenly you can have entry. Um, you don't need a visa these days to to do work in any other country. But everybody still thinks in terms of like, well, I have to do this in this fashion and I now have to deal with everything that I do in this particular mm. manner. And, mm. and to me, I think that that is the biggest challenge I have overall. Mm. Mm. Um, how do we get South Africans to actually move forward from yeah. where they are? Yeah, I think we're grappling. Even leaders are, are struggling with this. And it's a, it's a serious conversation. I mean, I'm having conversations with leaders now who are grappling with the idea, are we going back to the office? If we are, how is it hybrid? Is it not hybrid? Mm -hmm. And, and I, th I think for me, the, the question is, before we ask ourselves how we must do the work, we must just say, what is it that we must do? What is it that we must achieve? 
Can we achieve that in the office or out? Can we do that in atypical types of employment contracts? Can I tap into talent? One of the biggest trends in the changing world of work is tapping into talent and, and not employing them. Uh, so it's just if you need an academic to, for a particular meeting, you tap into that talent to bring them from that meeting, they go back to their lives. And so just taking people, it's going to take a lot of leadership and our, our leaders themselves need to you know, educate themselves with this changing world of work and also a little bit of reverse mentoring and, yes. and just surrounding yourself with young people. You might be mentoring them, but they also help mentoring you in this changing world because sometimes younger people can adapt into things that you might struggle with the leader and surrounding yourself with people who are young or think differently will expose you. And, uh, but I think we really need to come to a point where we adapt to them. Talking about leadership, and, and which is one of our key values as, as an organization, I always say, if I'm the brightest person in the room, mm. I'm in the wrong room. Sure. Mm. And secondly, the king is only as good as his advisors. Mm. The people who actually are my advisors have to be more brighter than I am. Mm. In actual fact, they have to have, and I don't mind them initially having an eye career mm. where they have that depth. Because mm. as we sit in that room, but a lot of leaders have this need to be the ones that know it all. Yes. yes. Where does this thing come from? I, I don't understand it. For me, is I'd rather be surrounded by a lot of bright people. And as I always say, as I'm teaching, I'm also learning. Yes. But I'm curious, how, how, were you always like that? Uh, did, did it happen when you were growing? Did you ever get into that space where you, because I'm curious, it that's doesn't in, come easy. That's interesting, that's interesting. I, 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 I always tell a lot of people, I'm either an idiot or I'm brave. <laughs> so I've always taken on jobs that <laughs> will always push me a little bit further. Yeah. The first job I took on where I had about, I was probably, I think, about 26 or so, and I had 300 people reporting to me. Sure. And I arrived with that mentality. And generally, mm. as engineers, you want to prove that you know and all mm. of other things. Mm. Every evening when I got home, it took 15 minutes sitting on the couch and I'd be completely asleep. That's how mm. tired I'd be. Mm. Mm. And after a while, I realized I have no life. I have work. Mm. And I get home, I eat, and then I'm gone. Mm. So I have to find a different way of doing sure. things. And, 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 and in essence, in, in, in me being able to understand, okay, I can't do everything. Mm. So therefore, I am going to have to rely on other people to do things. And mm. that takes you to trust first. Yeah. That's the first point you got to get on to. Yeah. You got to be able to trust that it, just because it's not done by you, mm. therefore, it doesn't mean that it won't get done. It won't get done. Mm. So you got to get over yourself first, mm. uh, that you know, I'm the only person that can do this. Mm. Then a second issue happened where I, I later on in my career, um, there's this friend of mine, and I always tell a lot of people the story of Marius. Marius is a serial entrepreneur, mm. but he's got this thing where he starts businesses and then he never runs them. Mm. And I asked him, but how have you managed to just keep on going and going and going? He says, the first thing that I do after I've built a business is find somebody to run the business. Sure. And he says, even in careers, you must be like that. The first thing once you get into a job is learn it, and then immediately once you've learned it, teach somebody how to do it. Mm. Because you will never get promoted. Yes. You talk about that in yes. the book, and I want to go back to that yes. issue of the fact that if you, 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 you are the only one that knows it, and, 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 and in construction we call it uh, the digging hole syndrome. Okay. If I've got three guys, and they th dig, you know, one meter deep, and a day, they dig uh, 30 meters. Now, the one guy digs 15 meters. The other guy digs eight. Mm. And then the other guy digs seven. Who do you promote? Uh, the one who's, who, 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 who dug uh, but 15. But I'm cutting my productivity in half. Mm. Now, and logically, you learn quite quickly that Mm. It's, it's if you don't teach the rest of the people how to dig the same way you dig. Mm. You're 15, managers think, no. 
<laughs> I'm going to cut my productivity in half. <laughs> and that is why we get yeah. stuck in... But why did they promote the guy who dig seven? Yeah. yeah. Um, because that does not cut the productivity in half. Mm. It only probably reduces by what? Mm. Uh, probably 25% or so mm. of, of the entire digging mm. and, and all of that. But those are some of the things I had to learn yeah. quite quickly. Yeah. First is learn what to do, and then secondly, then start teaching other people how to do it. Mm. And but you know, going back to the issue of what do they call it, of how to get promoted mm. and how to get on. Mm. Let's talk about that a little it's bit. It's the because, truth. Man. Yes, it's the truth. I I I don't think many people understand it, that <laughs> that when you hold information yes. and then you are the only person who can do something and. And if we are Exco and we are sitting at Exco and we are thinking of promoting you, the first thing we are thinking is if we promote this guy, who's going to do that? There because he's the only person who does that. So you really, really, it's in your best interest to train other people to do to know what you know. It's, you can't move if you don't train people. But I think many people, unfortunately, they hoard because they think they are, prom they are protecting their jobs, their power, uh, their power mm -hmm. but I don't think it works, especially not in this environment that we live in. Mm -hmm. You have to train people so that you can actually move. But it also comes with understanding um, and being conscious of the fact that you are also growing. I think when you are not growing, you are not developing, you are not learning, you, you're going to, at the end of the day, have... Um, those insecurities. Yeah. But if I'm growing and I know what my next stage is, I know what I need to learn, then I don't mind growing because the more I grow, the more people must grow. And I think uh, people need to understand that being the reliable specialist is good, but it can cause your career to stall. You yeah. have to train other people in order to liberate yourself to move. Now, all of that, and, and we, we, I'm trying to look at the, what do they call it, uh, uh, um, the questions that are coming up sure. online so sure. it, 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 it it seems like you you you've intrigued everybody so they are they're a bit stumped sure. <laughs> and they cannot <laughs> ask any any questions at the at the current moment i i i, I um, encourage you guys to ask questions uh you will still get to the book but the man is here so let's yes. ask the questions as as it is right now what are the tools that you can share you know with some of the individuals and and also with organizations to be able to create career advancement yeah yes. so I, I you know when i think about career advancement and i think about particularly in 2022 mm -hmm. we need to understand that the only way that we're going to have sustainable businesses is mm -hmm. to build career adaptability okay. and and for me care adaptability is about thinking about the imminent transitions of the business itself uh, and say, what does our business look like five years from now? Yeah. And I mean, executives use uh, think a lot about some mm -hmm. of these things. How does our business look like five years from now? How does it look like 10 years from now? And if it looks like that 10 years from now, what are some of the skills that we're going to need that we do not have? And that's why you find a lot of organizations have started uh, doing a lot of internal reskilling. And it's just thinking about, okay, this is where we are going. We might not have those skills now, but we need to have a big reskilling effort in order for us to skill people to get into the skills that we want. And I think it's always nice to start internally um, and reskill people for the future that we want uh, so that they're able to participate. But that's really uh, important. And, and it's also important as an individual to embrace career adaptability because, you know, just to speak like a researcher a little bit, there's something called career anxiety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, research has proven that career adaptability is negatively correlated to career anxiety. In other words, the more adaptable you are, the less anxious you become. Mm -hmm. And that's where you are also comfortable to train people because you are not anxious, but you know you have more skills and you are more... so. People get so anxious because 
they don't embrace career adaptability. One of the models uh, and tools, you asked me about models and mm -hmm. tools. One of the models and tools to build career adaptability is to think about um, what Savikas and other called Savikas talks about the four C's yes. of career adaptability. I always uh, get scared in mentioning forces because if you <laughs> if you forget one, then you're in trouble. <laughs> I should have said three. Okay. Um, but but he talks about these forces, and for me, they are so great. The yeah. first one is called career concern. Okay. That each and every individual must think uh, carefully. Um, and the word concern might throw people off because yes. it means I'm worried, but yeah. that's not what it means. What it means is each and every individual must think about uh, the future iterations of your career or profession. So if if you are a project manager, yeah. you, you should be thinking, how does a project manager look like eight years from now? What are some of the things that will be automated? What are some of the things that will be digitized? And what is the value that I need to be bringing? And, and for me, if you are not thinking about the future of your profession, yeah. you could be one innovation away from being redundant, just one. Uh, if someone innovates something, you could be redundant. Mm -hmm. So you have to literally obsess about how your world is changing. I was chatting to some of, some of the guys, uh, the accountants, and they were telling me about what are some of the things that have been automated in their profession mm -hmm. and how they how even the world of financial reporting is changing. So concern is the first one. Mm -hmm. So the second C is control. Mm -hmm. the, this idea that I'm the only one responsible for my career. This, my organization can give me tools, my organization can give me frameworks, my organization can even pay for it if it can, okay. but I am in charge of, of my organization. I have full control. If I have to even pay it for myself, uh, I was talking about this idea of LinkedIn learning yes. uh, the other day with someone who says, no, my organization is refusing to pay for my LinkedIn learning. I'm like, dude, you are a senior manager. That thing is 200 rands. <laughs> Can you not play around? 200 rands per month, you're waiting for your organization to play. You're playing around. Mm -hmm. Then you don't understand this idea of control. Career dependency is a problem. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are dependent on the employer for their career, and that's bad. So second C is control. The third C is curiosity. Mm -hmm. And... And in the new world of work that we live in, yo, we have to be curious, man. Um, you know, the only way you can read the books that you need to read, you can listen to some of these conversations that are being curated. And my understanding is that how train is made this available for anybody. Yes. So now you have this information that is just sitting there. If you're not curious, you're not going to learn. And so many of us need to find ourselves and build and cultivate curiosity and go back to that place where you ask yourself, how does this thing work? Why is this one there? How, uh, what is the move? What is the background of th when someone is being announced and, and, and they say so-and-so has been promoted? You must ask yourself, how, why, how? And that curiosity is going to be uh, very important because if you are not curious, then you are not going to be able to to grow in your career. I forgot the fourth C. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to go back to control. Yeah. Because control is important. Yes. In the sense that I think from an earlier, what do they call it? Uh, 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 um, from an early part of my career, mm. I don't know what had happened, mm. but something got me into a mood where I got to be. I remember talking to one of my bosses and I could see he has deep career anxiety. I had mm. to tell him, please settle down. Mm. My, uh, my career is not like yours. Mm. I am not bound to one particular company. And that was one of the best sure. things that I had realized at a very, very young age, mm. that I could actually be able to build my career in such a way that it is not bound to a place. Mm. It is, it, it, it is, I have built it to be, and probably I think the, 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 the ability to travel at a very yeah. early part yeah. of my career to go and work in another mm. country and see how other people live and, and how they deal with their mm. careers actually helped quite a lot. But mm. When I came back, I realized, no, my career is not linked up to a particular place. Mm. And, uh, you know, recently I had to remind myself of what they call it, of that particular issue that, mm. in actual fact, you had not built your career to be able to be bound mm. to a particular place. Mm. There isn't a place that owns your career. 
you know, um, like the, 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 the payoff line of my, you know, a watch I will buy at some point in time, uh, the, 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 they say you never own a Patek Philippe. Mm. You take care of it sure. for the next generation. Yes. And people's careers are like that, mm. like, and, and for me, I had gotten to be able to learn that companies don't uh, 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 own your career. Yeah. They just are shepherding it yeah. for a period of time. Mm. You know, the, you, they're just looking after it for the next place you're going to True. work at. And True. we have to learn to let go mm. of people also. Mm. But going back to the issue of control, mm. isn't that what brings anxiety? Because a lot of people, their careers are bound yeah. To a place. Yeah, it, it's exactly that. It's exactly that. If if you start thinking that the only way you are going to move in your case to replace your boss from today, you must stop that. That brings a lot of unnecessary anxiety. Um, because now you're watching me, if, if you're reporting me, you're watching me having fun, and you're like, hey, this guy's not going anywhere. But sometimes, sometimes you're you you just have to think and and understand that first of all your career is not bound to that company mm -hmm. but it's also not bound to the city that you were born in yes. it's also not bound to the country but i've had to have conversations with young people young people who who uh, when i was in hr we wanted to promote that person mm -hmm. for them to be based in cape town and yeah. they're like oh my god uh, my, my boyfriend is in in, in jail. and I'm like, dude, what are you what are you talking about? You know, just moving out of your city mm. can you know that's exactly what it did for you. It it opens it up your thinking. Your mind, yeah. Sometimes the best career move you can make is to move out of your city. Mm. Of course, if there are no other things that are binding you that might be serious yeah. but move out of your city don't think about your your organization as the only place move out of your country mm -hmm. and learn a new language and struggle but that frees you up but that also makes you realize that no man we are good enough okay. you actually the skills that i have in my country is good enough anywhere else and it allows you to to be free i think career progression if you only think about it to the confines of your of your of your organization, then we're going to have problems. But some people's careers, you know, are location specific. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> they are they are location yeah. dependent, as we I refer to it. Um, there's a question on, on on YouTube: How do I transition from my uh, career field to another without experience in that field? Without experiencing it first. Without experience in the field that oh, I want to okay. go into. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. So, I yeah. mean, one of the things that we've said is that you have to build that expertise in a different field. Yeah. Um, I, I was giving someone advice the other day, and, and I could see that they didn't believe me. Mm. Uh, in fact, not the other day. It was a few years ago. Mm. This One of the few people I know who know every sport. You mm. know, it's... Uh, you know, most of us, you would love maybe two or three. This guy knew every sport. And I said to him, um, and he actually felt like he was in a dead-end job. And I said to him, dude, you should be a sports analyst. And, no, I didn't study. You don't need to study. Mm. You, you can take one year and build an expertise into becoming anything right now. And, and people can still do that. And, and some of the people who've done that, they've done a simple thing. I have a bit of a camera. I love sport. Mm -hmm. Let me shoot myself content, put it on YouTube until you're discovered by somebody. So for me, I would give you this advice. While you're in your current role, start building an expertise. Uh, use the platforms that you've spoken about. Um, maybe if I were to mention some of these so-called MOOCs, the Coursera's. Yeah. And, and so on, the Udemy's. Mm. Use those things. You can literally become an expert in a year or even less uh, in one subject. Do every course in that particular subject. And then what I would then do, I talk about this in the job, once you have a bit of depth mm. in the future career, now you now start positioning yourself for that career. You now start writing article for that future career. I think you've spent a lot of time uh, reading about it. Now you just publish articles in your blogs, um, even in newspapers, they're always looking for articles. You write articles about that. Suddenly, when we associate that 
career that you want to go in. We suddenly associate it with you. You've done a few uh, articles. Once you have articles, you might even do a few interviews on TV. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, you are the go-to person doing that. When people Google you, uh, they now see credibility based on a career that you've just literally learned from these platforms. That's incredible that. So when I started off with my photography, mm. um, it was just, you know, doing it for uh, for fun and was for my wife's business and mm. uh, that she runs online. Mm. But in having conversations with her as we travel and also about that, I learned so much mm. that what she probably did in a three, four year period, I actually managed in a six month period. Sure. So I built an online um, uh, account. Mm. Uh, with everything that I had done in the last two, three years. Mm. And what most people do in years, um, I now have 33.4 uh, followers sure. in a space of six months. Wow. And with only 100 posts. Wow. But that is me learning from, you know, dealing with what she does. I now have the conundrum, what do I do with this thing? Do mm. I turn it into a side hustle? Mm. And I've managed, and my, all my followers are from abroad. Sure. Or most of them, I have very uh, little South African oh, followers. they want to see the They the want to see the, yeah. the experience, they want to see the, the local mm. world, and, and you know, they, and, um, and now they, the thing is, what do I do with it? Do I sure. now help uh, reserves build, you know, uh, followers all over the world? But as you say, you, you, you know, you can learn a new thing okay. from just simply listening to other experts. And sometimes I'd be like walking past the, in the kitchen and my wife is looking at something on, on, on YouTube. And I catch a conversation on something she's watching. Mm. And then out of nowhere, then I now have the fridge door open and I've forgotten what I was looking for in here. <laughs> Because now I'm learning, yeah. as you say. Yeah. That now I'm learning. But that's incredible. In, yeah. in, 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 I am going to give you, me and you can talk until the cows come sure. home. Before we get into <laughs> any other thing. <laughs> You'd be amazed. We're only left with 10 minutes in really? our conversation. Wow. Yes. <laughs> You'd be amazed. You started a, 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 a movement mm. um, that is, is, is important to me, and, and I want to talk about that. Mm. And, 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 you know, uh, Elin YouTube. Yes. Tell us more about that. Wow, what a question. <laughs> yes. I, I, one of the things that is a burden to me mm -hmm. is, is how many people are just literally locked out of the economy. Okay. You know, when you think about the economy of, of, of South Africa, you know, there are people, in fact, when Statistics South Africa releases the unemployment results, mm -hmm. uh, they give you the official definition of un unemployment and then they give you what they call the expanded definition of unemployment, yes. which includes people who've given up on the idea that they will ever be employed. Yes. They no longer look for a job. And so for me, that troubles me because, you know, once you've lost hope and you're in despair, then you can't, you can't work. So Elinia Tuba is, is a movement that I've started to say, firstly, there is... Uh, there's still another chance for you to participate in the economy. That's what Elinutuba means in Zulu. They, there's still another chance for anybody to participate in the economy. It's never too late. And many people, the reason they feel that it's never too late, it's maybe because I didn't finish high school, I do not have the skill. So I, I, I started this movement to convince people, first of all, that there's still an opportunity, but then to show them how. So Elinutuba is a movement built on two things. Firstly, we conduct what we call second chance seminars. So mm -hmm. the idea is that we're going to go into as many places in, as possible in South Africa to have second chance seminars where we show people how um, they will they can have another chance. So we literally had one in Soweto and uh, it was incredible. We had one of the speakers there, um, my brother Mlungis Nkosi, who is a teacher, mm -hmm. who has who showed people so many examples of many people who had not finished school, but there was this one lady she spoke about who had not finished school, came to him when she was 59 years old mm. and said, you know what, I want another chance of finishing high school. She now has an honors degree and she works and she studied uh, 
finishing grade 12 when she was about 59. Mm. So these seminars are there to just give people hope and to show them how. Secondly, we are facilitating with some of the CETAs uh, and so on uh, and opportunities to say, okay, some of the, some of the people might now you've sparked their interest into, okay, I can have another chance. We're f talking to the CETAs and we've started with a few people where we then say, this, the CETAs through the YouTube can pay for some of these uh, people to do just one skills program. I sh we showed some people at that, that time that if you can do a six week course on plumbing, um, six week plumbing course, six week uh, whatever, and then you start making a few gigs in your plumbing, and then you get a bit of money to look after your family, and then you start improving your plumbing skills. There's gonna be a time in a few years you go and do a trade test at Indela there at Olifants finding mm -hmm. you are an artisan. And so that's what we are trying to do to say it's never ever over. Um, there are many, many pathways to get education and learning in this country, and there are many pathways to make a living. And this movement is just going uh, around the country to convince people first, but also to try and facilitate. Uh, ways to fund them where possible. Th that is incredible. But I want to talk to you about something that most people take for granted sure. in their careers. And, and stemming off from Ellen YouTube, mm -hmm. because Ellen YouTube is your way of giving back. Yes, true. Uh, beyond anything else, Absolutely. because what you do, you connected the dots. Absolutely. Your time in the CITAS, your time in, mm -hmm. you know, in HR, and your general overall wilderness of, uh, uh, of being concerned about a lot of people don't realize that in giving in your career, you actually receive a whole lot sure. more. And let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Because your, your career has been blessed with a lot of people who've opened a lot of doors, Absolutely. but it is more from you giving yeah. than anything else. It is. Uh, I think, you know, if you could find some kind of a theme, um, you know, I, I think it's honestly is blessed to give than it is to receive. Yes. And, and, and the more you don't want to give and the more you hoard, mm. it's almost like whatever you are holding will be taken away from you. Um, so we need to give. And, and, and giving, especially if it comes from a genuine place, there's something about giving that just opens doors and opportunities for you, mm. even if you are not doing it. And there's a science around it, by the way. It's a, there's a science about it. The, if you understand uh, any, any job that gives you fulfillment is if there's a sense of meaning or uh, they call it transcendence, the, yes. the, that sense that what you are doing is beyond you and your paycheck. Yes. If you do that, you get more fulfilled than anybody else. And, yes. and what, is, what is funny is that the more you focus on other people's needs, the more your needs are taken care of. And, and so we need to give um, the opportunities that I've had in my life were mainly because I was giving. And, and I, 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 will never, I will never not emphasize that because for me, for me, the reason I ended up in rooms that I ended up in, it was not because I was trying to hustle myself into those rooms. I was just trying to help. I was just trying to give. Elie Tuba is my way of giving back, but it's also just incredible that that the more you give, the more you get fulfilled as well. There's a there's a sense of fulfillment that you can never get until you do something for somebody else. It's it's just that's how it works, you know. Um, but interestingly enough, that ends up benefiting you in in more ways than you can ever imagine. I think we must bring back the old post of the Minister of Manpower. Then mm. you can be the one who's... The <laughs> <laughs> you remember manpower, eh? Yes. You are revealing the your old, age. The old Minister of Manpower. <laughs> the old Minister of I Manpower. Remember. I think you are ready to I'm take ready. up that post. Eh? You are ready to become the old Minister of Manpower. <laughs> now, before we... As we order the call, we will get to a point where we, we will... Uh, finish just now, sure. and, 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 and I'll say to everybody, I, I, I haven't even covered fifty percent of what is in these books. Yeah, the, the, these are books that will live with you throughout your career. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I myself with my career, you might consider me with a mature career. Um, I will tell you today, 
if I end up leaving the GMA, um, you must know that uh, Spiwe made me do it. Because <laughs> I learned quite a lot from the books themselves. Uh, yes. and, 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 and in essence, it, it, these are the kind of books you, you, you don't read once. Mm. Uh, it's books you go back to and, mm. and you, you and, and they are written in the most accessible manner possible. Mm. Um, even if you are not a reader like uh, uh, myself and Spiwe, you the way he's written them and in actual fact I, I will steal the method of writing and I will write my book like that mm. uh, where it's short punchy chapters and you can read but the thing with them is that once you start you're going to get to the end yes. without having to, uh, uh, to stop. So for me, the, 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 the question that I, 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 I am sitting with and I'm saying, a lot of people struggle with reducing the learning curve. Mm. What are the mm. simple advices you could ever give in and around things like that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think for me, you, I think you nailed it when you say, I intentionally tried to, ro to write in a very accessible way, but I also know that even if I write in, 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 in a way that is you know, I think is accessible. There are still people who are struggling with the bit of reading. First of all, really try and understand what is your learning style. Okay. Um, some people really, you can learn more from reading, some from watching, some from taking a book. Uh, but when, also when you start, there's, there's this book, that I think you might have read uh, the book by James Clear, um, talking about atomic habits and how yes. you build habits. Yes. For me, if you want to just reduce that learning curve and accelerate your learning, uh, it's really literally about building habits. Yeah, if, small little bit of Small little habits. Yes. If you've never been a reader, um, you don't want to try and read three hours uh, as you start because what is important is the building of the habit mm -hmm. until the habit sticks with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, started, I started going to the gym about a few months ago and mm -hmm. one of the best things that my personal trainer did is just getting me to love the idea of being at the gym. Mm -hmm. So the first time we went there, we were doing these little things and, and I was even feeling offended. I'm like, well, how can this guy do this? But it got me to the idea that you have to get to the gym, mm -hmm. like the idea of being in the gym and so on. So I would say really understand the idea of building habits. Build, it's more important to get the habit of learning mm -hmm. than it is to, 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 to actually try and read for three hours. It's like, it's like if, if you've never walked uh, took a walk or uh, you don't want to run four kilometers you're going to injure yourself so start by a little make that thing a habit but also just understand that many of us already uh, can piggyback in habits that we have mm. many of us watch a lot of youtube yeah. many of us watch a lot of podcasts yes. maybe maybe some of it it's more about ha 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 but you're already watching at least you're watching yawning cats you're, yeah watching yawning <laughs> cats all you have to do just switch it up a little bit go to something that is solid then yeah. go back go to something that is solid so that you also get into that habit of consuming good stuff and eventually you will you will you will see how easy it is to just get swallowed into a good book or a, a habit of learning stuff on youtube that's incredible because even what they call the 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 theory of running yes. is exactly about that mm -hmm. and, and i'm a runner so okay. i had to learn sure. you know, first you know went out there and and i got you know, at a point where, like now, my ITB, which is the muscle behind you, mm -hmm. uh, your, your your knees here yeah, just would become painful. Mm -hmm. And I went to one doctor, and he just said to me, um, I still remember it was uh, Dr. Namatendani, the former physiotherapist for Sundowns. Mm -hmm. It was I wasn't there because of that. <laughs> just, <laughs> but I'm always with the winner. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it was because the, 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 he said to me, "No, oh, you have no problem." Mm. It's actually a function of conditioning. Sure. And I said, what's conditioning? So he started taking me through it, and he gave me a few exercises to do. And then the next thing, I was able to go past 10 Ks. Mm. Um, when I got to 15, the problem started again. I went back to the conditioning. Mm. And it's conditioning. What you were talking about, it's, mm. it's, it's actual, in actual fact, is it, in actual fact, it is conditioning. Sure. Even in sports theory and, and not regular and how to get fit and uh, bring on endurance, mm. it's about conditioning. And that is why the theory of what they call it, of running says, if you want to run 21 Ks over the, what they call it, uh, over the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, you should actually run 10 Ks or seven and a half case for four days okay or 10 case over three days 
constantly because you build the mileage. Mm. You might not be aware of that, but your body uh, recurrently builds up the mileage from the previous day and from the previous day. And then ultimately over the weekend, the 21K looks like nothing. Mm. But that's the, 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 the theory of conditioning and, and running. Sipiwe, so, 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 we, we can talk until the cows come home. They are definitely coming home. <laughs> and all that is left is for me to thank you and uh, encourage the, what do they call it, the, um, the viewers. Mm. And those who might just be listening, you know, you are doing something else, go and buy these books. Um, in actual fact, as I live here, I'm going to find the rest of Spewer's books and go through them and because to me, it is, I love the style with which they are written. Mm. Um, and thank you for bringing something that uh, beyond anything else, bringing career accessibility and mm. mobility and everything else into a language that is accessible and, in actual fact, it, it, it can work with anybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you so and much. And to, what do they call it, to the publishers, we would like to thank you too for making the books available and making Spewer available to us. Uh, to our management in our business, uh, thank you for always making the time and uh, the leadership to take the time to be able to listen. And ultimately to those who make this work, uh, the viewers, um, I'd like to thank you for all the numbers you've given us so far in order they call it. It's not all about, just because I said I'm on social media, it's not always about the followers. It's, <laughs> it's about the impact we have and, and mm -hmm. we've been given a lot of feedback and I'd like to thank you all. From me, Slovolo Samatevele le Mapulana, Mutwasaratusaroting Baneng, Kloya Matevele, I thank you. <laughs>